So I'm not sure if Deuteronomy 32.10 means much to you, but it meant a lot to me on my journey as a new Christian because um, I, I was not raised with the Bible. I, you know, the denomination we were part of uh, told us not to read the Bible because we would get confused. Yeah, I'll say that now. Anyway, praise the Lord anyhow. Because I did read it. And, and this was one of, the, one of the verses that I read that really woke me up and gave me a picture of what my life used to look like, but not what it looks like now. So I'll read it out loud, and then we'll see where the Lord takes us in the last few minutes here. It says in Deuteronomy 32, in the King James 21st version, King James version, he found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I read that the first time, I stopped and said, Grateful Dead concert. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, that, that's exactly it. I, I, I flash back to some, uh, my past when I was doing drugs and living that lifestyle, and there was a, a conference, uh, a concert in New York City, and there was about three hours that I could not remember what happened. I left the building. I shouldn't have, but I left the building, and I don't know what happened in those three hours, and my friends waited till like 2 o'clock in the morning for me to come back. Like, that's how close I was to dying. Like, waste, howling, wilderness. I said, I'm remembering that one because that's exactly what my life was like. And then it says, he led him, so the he here, God found Israel in a desert land. That's, that's what this is referring to. And he led him about, and, and God led me about. So he led me about and instructed me, and he kept me as the apple of his eye. Can you say that? He kept me as the apple. You believe that? You believe he's kept you as the apple of his eye? Because this word for Israel applies to us too. You need to own this. You need to block out the lies that were spoken over you and the negative things and the word curses. That's not what God thinks about you. That old man died. You got baptized, and when you come up out of the water of baptism, that's a sign of the resurrection, but it's also a sign of Israel coming through the Red Sea and all of Pharaoh's army getting swallowed up. They never fired one arrow at the army. God did the whole thing. Nobody would have predicted that in the natural. Like, what kind of strategy are we going to have? I know. We'll go down to the Red Sea. We'll get them to chase us. God will open it up. We'll get through. They'll follow us, and he'll drown them all. He does exceedingly abundantly above. All that you could ask or imagine. But being faithful, like was already said here, being faithful is crucial to the whole thing. So I believe that each and every one of us is the apple of God's eye. You might not have been in such a dramatic, waste-howling wilderness, but anytime we're separated from God, it could improve. I'll leave it at that. I've been working in the finance industry for many years now, and uh, part of how I became a Christian was because this time of year, I always kind of refer back to what happened um, in 1980. Uh, I was a big Beatles fan. And I don't know if you remember this, but the Pope was shot that year. And then John Lennon was murdered. And I was really devastated by that. Uh, he had just put out an album, and one of the songs on the album was Beautiful Boy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And he, there was a whole side of him. And I know he wasn't a Christian, so there's plenty of things not to like. But uh, it, he was a human being, and he had a son. And you could tell by the, the lyrics, if you've ever seen the movie uh, Mr. Holland's Opus. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Very spiritual movie. Wow. This is what the father sings to his son at the end of the movie. Beautiful, beautiful boy. And I was devastated. Even, you know, I wasn't a Christian. And not long after John Lennon was murdered, my uncle was murdered. Yeah. And it was just, I won't go into all the details, but I went into this waste howling wilderness. You know, I, my, the rug of my life was pulled out. Everything I thought I was going to do, everything changed. My job, I wasn't going to work for that business anymore. The girl that I was dating, that I'm glad I didn't marry now, but at the time I didn't know. You know, like all of a sudden, nobody wants to talk to you because it's like, who, why would your girlfriend want to marry the mob? <laughs> anyway, everybody's got their own story, right? But it was through death that life came to me. It put me in, a, in an aware, uh, awareness that I could not, I did not have the tools to cope 
with the kind of crisis I was dealing with. So what do you do? You go to the tools that you already know, and that's called medicating your pain. And then the pain doesn't go away, so you try to take more. And that just, that just increases the pain and, and the foolish decisions that you make, right? So I don't think I'm any, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of people that have similarly difficult stories, but the point is it's a, it's a wilderness, and you don't know how to get out. And often the things you're doing to get out make it worse because you didn't, you didn't know there's another way. And thankfully, my mom um, was a Christian at that time. And, and probably just to, to summarize it, it wasn't necessarily what she said to me, although she was witnessing to me because she was grieving with me. It was my father's brother, right? I mean, we, we were all working together as a family for decades. I was only 23 at the time, but my mother was the first secretary they ever hired in the office. Like, so she was very intimately familiar with my dad's family. And like I said, it wasn't, not, she said good words. She told me to read the Bible, but it was the way she was coping with the tragedy that I knew I didn't have. Whatever reserve she was pulling from, I didn't have that. And there's, there's a phrase that Paul uses in the New Testament. You can provoke people to jealousy by the way you live your life. That's what, that's what did it. I could argue the, the conversation. I could argue the scriptures and all of that. I couldn't argue that she had something that I didn't have. <laughs> Preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. Your life is an open epistle. That's how Paul said it, read by all men. And Corey Ten Boom said it this way, no pit is so deep that he is not deeper still. You believe that? Because it would be hard to find a deeper pit than the one she was in. Auschwitz kind of place. It's called Ravensbrück prison camp in World War II. People were being put in the ovens every day. She smuggled the Bible in. Miracle. She was leading people to the Lord. Her and her sister were leading people to the Lord in hell. Hell on earth. And miraculously she got out. No pit is so deep that he's not deeper still. With Jesus, even in our darkest moments, the best remains. And the very best is yet to be. So we would say the best is yet to come. Look at somebody. The best is yet to come. Not just when you die and go to heaven. That's true. In this life, I believe that. Best is yet to come. She worked with people after the war. And somebody dedicated a home. But before the home was dedicated, her sister, who was her closest ally in life, neither of them ever got married. And the sister had a vision of, of this home and described it in great detail. After the war, somebody donates a home looks exactly like the one her sister described while she was in Auschwitz. I mean, Ravensbrück, sorry. So Corey Ten Boom goes and looks at the house with the owner, and it's a 56 mansion in Holland. And there's gardens, and the, and the sister predicted that there was going to be gardens there because people that had been through trauma like to get their hands dirty and grow things. And, and all of a sudden... Corey Ten Boom says, is there a circular stairway in the middle of the house? And it's got in, whatever you call that, like a place where you could insert flowers. And, she, and the lady said, oh, have you been here? Exact description. And she said, no, but somebody I know has. <laughs> Amazing. No pit. It's too deep. Whatever I'm doing, God can handle it.